A big thanks to Bernhard for sponsoring this episode. This is going to be the first Dutch national cheese recipe. Did you know that the Greek have a recipe called Saganaki? And it consists of cheese that is simply grilled in a pan. And then I thought, wow, that is so magical. I need to make that. And my second thought was, hold on. We got that already in the Netherlands. And it's called a kaas souffle. And then I started thinking, what other cheese recipes, like a whole dish focused on cheese, do we have in the Netherlands? And then I came to the conclusion, then there are no such dishes. Besides the kaas souffle, which is like a pathetic excuse for basically what the Greek did first, we got nothing. We, the Dutch, the cheese eaters, we even have a whole market just for cheese. We got men running around with cheese in the middle of them. Cheese is coming out of our ears. We can't say two sentences without mentioning cheese. The Dutch. I think this needs to change. I think it's my responsibility as a Dutch person to take the first step. I was always taught that when you see a problem, look at yourself first. What can I do to solve the problem? So here it is. Here is my solution. And the solution is simple, it's just cheese. The difficult part comes and how am I going to turn this and that into the new Dutch national recipe? Let's get started. Since this is an experiment, I bought three types of cheeses. All three are Gouda cheeses. This is the youngest Gouda cheese. Then we get the half matured and finally we have the matured Gouda cheese. All of those three taste amazing. However, they will have different melting points, which is important for making a cheese recipe. So why does everybody always get so excited about molten cheese? Because it's fake cheese. It's flavor enhanced and it's made so that it melts easily while being extremely stringy, which natural cheese doesn't do. I'm gonna start by cutting off the edges, getting rid of all of that orange outside. Once that's gone, I'm gonna take out my cheese knife, which every Dutch guy has in his kitchen drawer because he loves cheese that much. And then I'm gonna start slicing my cheese. I want thick chunks of cheese so they still have some structural integrity and don't fall apart. And at the same time, I don't want them too thick that the whole meal will become way too heavy. So around a finger thickness, just like my steaks, would probably be best. Now we got three stacks of cheese and I'm ready to go to the next step, which is seasoning. I'm gonna start my seasoning with one part of paprika powder, one part onion powder, a quarter part of garlic powder, and I'm gonna finish it off with a little bit of cayenne pepper. You can add as much or as little as you like. I'm gonna mix that all up. Now, normally I would add salt to this, but now I don't have to because there's plenty of salt in the cheese. I'm gonna need a tray and a sheet of baking paper. Then I'm gonna take a chunk of cheese from the young, the half matured and the mature cheese. My next train of thought was what is typically Dutch that goes really well with cheese? And there it is, mustard. So this is typical Dutch mustard and I'm gonna rub the cheese in with it. Mustard has a lot of acidity in it which is gonna break down the richness and the creaminess of the cheese. That's why it works together so well. I'm not looking for the thickest layer of mustard, I'm just looking for a little bit of adhesive to help the rub stick onto the cheese. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get this beautiful rub on. And the good thing is you don't have to wonder of how much you can put on because there's no salt, there's no danger of over seasoning. I'm gonna be using the Bernhardt pellet smoker. This is a beautiful barbecue with a large cooking surface, which is perfect for our tray because you can't just fit a giant tray like that into any barbecue. And the cool thing is we can use these wood pellets to smoke the cheese with. <laughs> That's so cool because in the Netherlands we love smoked food. Think about our smoked sausage, our fish and all these other cool things. And why not our cheese? So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna fire it up, set the temperature to 140 degrees Celsius, slide the cheese in and let the barbecue do its job. Now the big question and the big experiment is, 
when is this cheese done? All three of them are gonna be done at a different moment in time because they got different melting points because of their maturity. So when are they done? I don't know. It's gonna be scary, it's gonna be dangerous. We're gonna find out together. It's been around 20 minutes and I wanna check on my cheese. Oh, look, one of them already started melting and losing its structural integrity. So this is getting nice and soft almost to the point where you think, hey, that smoking has been adding value and it's melting my cheese at this moment. So when you think of dishes and warm dishes, that's the point where you might want to start thinking about getting it out. However, I want to look at the other cheeses as well. You see, this one is still firm. This is the more matured one. And this is the youngest one, as you can see. So now the question comes, what do I do? Do I take them off right now? Do I leave them in a little longer? And I'm gonna leave them in just a little, little longer. I might regret it later, but I'm gonna make the executive call and I'm gonna start by prepping the rest of the ingredients. Because something can never be a national Dutch dish if it doesn't have at least meat and vegetables. So I'm gonna start by melting some butter. To the butter, I'm gonna add half a kilogram of minced meat, 50-50 pork beef. And if your minced meat sticks to the pan, then a Dutch grandmother always has a good solution. Add more butter. I'm also adding half a diced onion, a coarse chopped garlic clove, and now I'm gonna keep on grilling the minced meat until it's nice and crunchy. As you can see, the minced meat is getting nice and crunchy. Time to add some parsley. And as the Dutch, we love our minced meat sweet, so we're going to add some sweet soy sauce, also known as ketchup manis. Now it's time to lower the heat, let everything get nice and sticky, perform a quick taste test. It still needs a little bit of salt. There we go, and this is done. Time to move on to the veggies. And what the Dutch love most is some good old broccoli. Beautiful green tips of the broccoli blanched in some boiling water. We still want the broccoli crunchy, so five minutes of boiling is max. Time to create the last part of the dish. And again, it requires butter. Let it melt in a pan. Add a whole lot of red onion rings and let them turn soft. Add a couple of tablespoons of sugar and let the onions caramelize. Now all of our toppings are done and it's time to take the cheese out. So I think I checked all the boxes that the Dutch mama need me to be checked. I got some cheese, I put mustard on, melted it in the barbecue, boiled and added my veggies, grilled up some minced meat and sweetened it with our favorite sauce, ketchup manis. And of course I needed a little extra, so I topped it off with some butter caramelized onions. Now I think it's time I started to do the taste test because I'm really happy with the way this cheese turned out. Could this be? the next Dutch cheese dish. Mm. Mm. That is really good. As you can see, like real cheese doesn't stretch like you see in some kind of video or movie. It just stretches a little bit. And then it just, it just breaks off. So stretchy cheese looks good, but no bueno. It's hard competition, the Kaasvle. That is really cheesy. I'm such a cheese head that I would have loved to eat this every day. Definitely. So I just got in an expert and um, because who are we? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pit master. So I got like an average lady off the street, aged around 10. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna ask her, what if your mama would make this for you every week? I'm happy. Yeah, would that be good? Now you know. We got the experts saying it's good. It's amazing. It's so simple. It's just cheese with a little bit more flavor, but that flavor does everything. So I don't care what Roel says, I don't agree. This is the best next thing. And the other thing that we need to try out is which one, because this was a younger one, which one is best? And do you still taste the difference? Because like, like I said, like the heat is really... What's that? Cheese. Older one. Oh, hot. Wow. The youngest one is best. The older the cheese gets, yeah. it's just not. 
it's not good. No, no. I for me, for me, I'm, I'm totally amazed. Like, I, I like things like cheesy bread, but I don't even need cheesy bread if, if, anymore if you just can have a whole loaf of cheese. So final verdict, you're gonna give it another try? I think I definitely have to do another version of this. Better. I can do better. On that note, I'm gonna make place for a new video. You gotta watch a new video. It's freaking awesome. Like, it's, it's not the new video, it's the next video. But I'm sure it's the next video you're gonna watch. So in the meantime, I wanna thank the patrons, the YouTube members, and I wanna thank you for watching. Just let us know what you think, and if you got a great idea for a good cheese dish that the whole nation in the Netherlands can eat, let us know in a comment down below. See you guys next time. Until then, eat smakelijk and keep on grilling.